Okay, cool. All right, I wonder uh, what adaptations VB will make or what if he learned anything from the set they just played. Yeah, so let's see. Coming into Grand Finals, already coming in with the crack shoots, but Fawn is ready with the spacing around. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and a great empty landing coming out from the Fawn. Meaning, uh, Fawn is able to get a grab. Now being put off stage themselves, and then unfortunate can putting Fawn back off stage again. Oh, just waiting and Ooh. catching the spot touch with the burn knuckle. I think BB was just waiting for Fawn to press any button. Yeah, Guess I right. think uh, BB recognizing that uh, Fawn had spot dodge and the super active hitbox of burn knuckle, making sure that they were not going to be missing that. It's a deadly combination for sure. Ooh. That clay pigeon kind of helping, kind of not. A little bit. It didn't quite get Fawn the reversal that they wanted because of the, uh, wow, that, that gunman got deleted. <laughs> Terry just waiting it. Oh, okay. N nice conversion by the clay pigeon into the back air forward air. Yeah, the back air. That's a, a classic coming out from wow. Fawn. Oh my, so much percent immediately from that sheriff into can. Any other gunman, it wouldn't have been that fast, but it was great awareness yeah. by Fawn. And you could see Fawn even like premeditating that too. You saw Baby was sitting on that platform. Fawn set up a gunman. They were like, alright, yeah, I I know you want a power dunk from there. Wow, he, he, we just saw him in the set with numbers and he, he's still doing it with, with Fawn too. It's a yeah, great option, but not when your opponent knows you're gonna do it. You know? it yeah, it just feels kind of feels like a, a comfort option, but so many players have been like just ready for it every time. This can set up is kind of dicey. Vivi's still living, though. He's got to make oh, use of this go, but... They get yeah. caught by the, the zapper hitbox again. And wow. Still ooh, back hands. That was so close. Ooh, I feel like uh, Fong could have up smashed, but still got the kill there. So, yeah. good awareness. Yeah, they're still able to Great get setup. the uh, can conversion. Looking for another oh, one right another now. Another can ooh. conversion. Recognize, recognizing which direction the can was going to hit him in. That was great. Yeah. Can into, oh my god. Right now, VV is in the Duck Hunt Fender Blender. All right, yeah. so Burn hey. Knuckle will put Fawn off stage, but certainly not a place that they're uncomfortable with all of the resources that they have. Gunman's so fast, you can't just roll and like, you can't roll into just movement. You gotta be very careful. Unfortunately, the can, I think Fawn may have been able to punish that power dunk, uh, like, for game, but the can just put them in a bad position. Ooh, power guys are going unpunished, but punishing that move could be your death sentence as well. And Fa I know Fawn would definitely want to hold on to the stock as long as possible. They want to wrap up this game, and they don't want Terry to have any potential of having, like, some go cheese or a go comeback. The crowd got something else to say, though. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd doesn't care. The crowd wants the reset. <laughs> yeah. That great can. That was so good by Fawn. They just, like, tapped the can once after throwing it out with the back air, put it in the perfect position to catch VB for a scratch shoot. And even with, like, a like a shaky first stock from Fawn, I think VB having the first stock, like, Fawn immediately, like, was adapting and had so many can yep. conversions throughout this game. Just popped it once so many to put games. it in that perfect position. Fawn is just aware about ex like where to put the cannon, how to get it there, like so precisely. All right, we do have the switch coming out from Vivi. They're going to be okay. going to the Lucario. The Lucario game. Okay. Like we saw this um, before in their first set, and actually he switched from, or they switched from Lucario to Terry. So I wonder how the Lucario is going to fare now. Yeah, I think really just. Trying to look for a more comfortable pick in this matchup. So oh, rolling into the can, have to be careful and have to be aware. Otherwise, you're just gonna eat so much damage from Duck Hunt's conversions. Yeah, and I feel like what we saw in their previous set, uh, I, I think Vivi's source of frustration was just that all of Duck Hunt's like uh, like main resources really kind of shut down um, the aura sphere. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so important it's for so BB's like pressure. A lot of Lucario's pressure comes from like just the fear of, of Aura Sphere. Yep. And when you can't do your B reverses and wave bounces as easy, oh, it's harder. No. But wow, great usage of the B reverses. I was saying to position um, BB perfectly to get that down. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that is two missed techs coming out from Fawn, meaning Vivi going to be able to find first stock here and in this game, oh, too. Great. Fawn immediately just raced towards Vivi and read the roll. It, oh, oh tried to get a little speed. too fancy with the, the, the extreme speed. And great for Fawn, though, because Rage Lucario and Duck Hunt at 49 could spell disaster with one forward smash. Yeah, and that's, like, kind of really unfortunate for Vivi because, like, you don't want to give up your aura yeah. at all. That is of all. so important to yeah. like the neutral and everything. With all characters to SD, I think Lucario and you know other characters with comeback mechanics, it just hurts more. Yeah. Because it wasn't it wasn't your opponent, it was all you. Yeah. I, oh great! That was so fast from DV. And amazing aura sphere. Oh but No, not another once one. Once again, SDs. I feel like Vivi's playing much better and so clean and consistent, but these SDs are his downfall right now. Yeah, we're going to see if Fawn can capitalize on two SDs to, you know, bring this Xeno to a close. Right now, it seems that Fawn is just putting Vivi oh, in the no. Fender Blender and one down there. Yeah, they're making it back. So Extreme close to speed. two. He was probably just pixels away. Ooh, he spot dodged what the Aura spot Sphere. Dodge. Right now, I think the Goddess of Victory is all with Fawn. Fawn has all the momentum, all the sauce, but once again, you can never count out Rage Lucario. I love the way that Vivi went back to charge the Aura Sphere on the downed gunman, keeping wow. the gunman out of play for just a little bit longer. That's, you know, that's micro It's micro right there. These micro situations are what took, wow, and the Aura Sphere just chucking the gunman off the stage. That, these cans and these gunmen just blocking Aura Spheres, just doing so much work. And Vivi's just forced to give Fawn all of the space because of the slowly approaching can. Not to mention he's at 160, they're at 166 too, so it's just just so much, so many projectiles that can kill, and ultimately it's not even a projectile, it's that up air that gets yep, the job done. Up air is going to be taking it. Definitely a very unfortunate game two for Vivi. Mm -hmm. That felt like Vivi's game to win with two really clean stocks, followed by two very unclean recoveries. It was all because of those recoveries, and that's when you have to ask, like, when you switch from, you know, like, Terry to Lucario, like, all of a sudden, it's, like, it's a it's a heavy switch, because they both recover completely differently, and yeah. maybe you can ask that, that, like, maybe that's why the SDs happen, but either it, way, it's still unfortunate. It definitely felt uncharacteristic. Vivi is usually so on point with those extreme speed recoveries, so I think it may have actually been a question of like how how fresh the the Lucario was because yeah. like this one made no sense. The, the second stock when he fell off with the Aura Sphere, he went straight to the Legend, still missed it somehow. Yeah, so, I, I don't know about that one. That's that's just cheating. The Smash Ultimate, man. I don't Smash know. Ultimate. The Smash Ultimate. Well. <laughs> That'll do it for Xeno then. Yeah, right? that is uh, wow. Xeno 252 in the books. 252. With uh, Fawn taking, Fa you know, Fawn has been on such an amazing come up lately and taking it over Vivi in a 2-0 winner's side grand finals. Fawn making it through, not dropping a single set. Fawn played like very, so. very like, very clean. I feel like his can, conver or their can conversions, their setups, and just their awareness, their oval, overall awareness of where the opponent will be and responding with the can like like plops, you know? Yeah, and I mean like they've always been a really like solid player, but it's just really, it's really impressive to see them like really take that to the next level and make it to the top of the top. Mm -hmm. Grand finals, winning and playing people back to back as well, like that's not easy, that's a lot of... Um, stress and a lot of pressure to mm -hmm. load. Especially with Duck Hunt, a character that I feel like you have to be playing on point for oh, yeah. very, Duck, very long time. Duck Hunt is not a like a very like pick up and play type yeah. character. Yeah, Fawn's you, put in that lab time. You can't just play Buck, Duck Hunt and start mashing too. I feel yeah. like all of the like the gunmen, the cans, the clay pigeons, they have to be thrown out precisely and accurately. Yeah. Everything has to have a purpose. Exactly. And he he did it excellently. Like but, uh, aside from those two SDs from BB, which really is unfortunate, I wish we got to see more games being played. But yeah, hey, that's hey. grand finals. That's that's yeah. Smash Ultimate sometimes. And guys, before we head out for the night, just as a reminder, we are Xeno Weeklies. We are here every Wednesday here at 21 Ludlow Street, uh, right near the BDF and J trains. Check us out on Twitch, on Twitter, on uh, Start.gg. Also, while you're in the area, check out Waypoint Warriors. Uh, literally two blocks down from Xeno there every uh, Tuesday. Uh, also, 
do blackout. Blackout uh, NYC. Make sure you're <laughs> you're registering. I know early bird is over, but still register. And make sure you guys are following House of Three Thousand on Twitch, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, and YouTube. And anyway, guys, I've been Force Armor. I'm Dita. Hope you all have a great one, a great night, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Deuces.